What's it really like to be a YouTube content creator? The short answer is, it's really damn hard. The long answer, well, stick around and you'll get to out the full inside story. You see, I took a bit of a break. I said, I'm done with this. I'm not getting many views. My subscriber count just went like this. And I was wondering, well, what's going on? I'm doing what these big YouTube content creators helping the little guys. I'm doing everything they're telling me to do. I'm listening to my audience. They're saying, oh, Max, you should do this. Oh, this is a great idea. Oh, this could be a lot better. Oh, why don't you do this? And I'm doing all that. My arms are all over the place. You see, I only have two arms. Being a grandmaster in chess doesn't give you a special third arm or fourth arm like some mutant being. So in the end, I was feeling kind of a bit burnt out, a bit overwhelmed, and mostly just quite disappointed. And I think that one of the big challenges when it comes to content creation is this balance between what are people actually going to watch and actually going to enjoy without losing yourself in the process. And yeah, that's something I've been really struggling with. I feel like that in the process of pursuing my dream of getting to that 1000 subscribers, of really helping millions of people around the world to play better chess, I feel like I lost myself in that journey. And that's what I'm done with. I'm done with doing things just to try and please other people or to do it, try to get the approval of somebody else. I mean, I'm just not going to do that anymore. I'm just going to say exactly what's on my mind. I'm going to do the videos that I want to do. And if people don't like it, well, go to some other channel, you know, don't waste your time complaining here like this or negative energy is not good for you. And it's not really what I uh, want for my audience either. So, I mean, if you are enjoying these kind of videos, of course, I would greatly appreciate it if you can smash that like button. And also, if you are wanting to enjoy more videos like this, then certainly subscribe to my channel as well. But that's why I found like chasing the views and chasing the subscribers. Like it's just, it's like a losing battle in a way, because no matter how much you improve or how much things go up, the thing is, it's not a linear journey. Kind of like with chess improvement, you know, you might be working hard, doing the right things for six months or more, not really seeing any improvement in your rating. And then suddenly it just clicks and it all just goes much better. Suddenly you're a hundred points stronger and things seem really good. But then, you know, there's sort of this feeling of, well, things are going great. And then when you do get that success, some, some people get that feeling, of, okay, how do I do even better? Or, you know, they get afraid that they're going to lose that. And so that's sort of one thing I know that it's been a struggle for me, not just in YouTube, but in chess and pretty much anything I've pursued where I've had that big breakthrough. And it's like that kind of expectation of, well, let's make the next big breakthrough happen right away. And then times end up doing the reverse and again, being my own worst enemy getting in my own head and things just get a lot worse and that's kind of what happened with youtube you know going from getting a good sort of flow to just basically almost nothing i know that there are some people who were still loyal to the channel who you know definitely still kind of you know kind of enjoyed my experimentation my trying new things and really appreciated that even so of course i'm very grateful to those who have stuck around to those who are you know, enjoying me kind of evolving the way in which I produce my content. At the same time, yeah, it's sort of, I think a part of this journey is, yeah, sort of a journey for oneself, as well as a journey of what are people actually going to like and actually going to enjoy. Like, it's a very difficult balance. And well, I think it's something that is sort of kind of not really talked about much in, uh, uh, in many circles. But I think that one thing that people don't realize is the toll that being a content creator can take on your mental health if you're not uh, doing the right habits or have the right practice or attitude going into it. Like I know that like this sort of chasing of the constant numbers, like it just leads to expectations and ultimately it leads to disappointment because there will be a point where the numbers will at times go down where different things might be happening. You know, one example, maybe there's some big holiday and so everyone is busy, you know, eating, you know, their turducken on Christmas or on uh, on Thanksgiving instead of binge watching YouTube videos. So, you know, there's some things where you have to trust in the process, I think, as well. 
So, uh, yeah, there's so much I want to act. You know, when I will start this video, I, I had this video idea for so long, but I waited so long because I knew that if I did it too soon, I would just start raging and I would start you know, saying all these things not, not, not don't necessarily mean it to come for a place of anger and frustration, maybe rather than how I genuinely feel about people. Because I really do believe in the best in people in general, even, you know, the haters, the trolls, the... I think I consider that these people just have a conditioning that just is not supportive for their life. And I think that, you know, while I should certainly take responsibility if they want to improve their life, at the same time, I don't really think like, it's entirely their fault that they're in this sort of way. You know, most people are ultimately a slave to to conditioning, you know, usually from their parents, maybe from other influential people in their lives as well. And so I think that, you know, when someone is being, let's say, very unkind or very cruel, or they're sort of just trying to take the piss, well, I think that, okay, it's uh, mainly the fault of their conditioning. And if they had better conditioning, they would not behave in this way. And so I try to sort of empathize as much as possible without, you know, letting it be, uh, you know, a focus of my energy, as it were. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's definitely like one big part in there because I'm still a small content creator. Like the number of haters I have is still relatively small in that sense. But I do know that as I get bigger and bigger over time, as my social media following increases, then, you know, there are going to be, of course, a lot more people who are really vibing with my messages, really enjoying uh, what it is I share and getting value out of it. And I think even having better lives as a result of the way that they behavior and habits change as a result of hearing my message. At the same time, yeah, it's also going to be more haters as well as all the, uh, you know, all the great people as well who really, you know, connect with our message. So, uh, yeah, that's basically, that's mostly what I want to share. I think also another challenge as well is realizing that the rules of certain games are very different. I think that a large part of frustration, at least for me, uh, in my own journeys has been just figuring out what are the rules of this game that I'm in so that I can basically well, know what exactly this I'm aiming for and therefore how to actually win this game as such. And that's, you know, whether it's chess, whether it's business, whether it's YouTube, like it has different sort of rules. I mean, it's not like the game of life where you're, you're the referee and you kind of determine, okay, these are the, the factors that determine whether I'm successful or not. These are rules sort of governing that as such. You know, it kind of, in a way, it's sort of just a microcosm. So it's a very different situation. And one thing I've kind of realized is that well, it's kind of something that really hurt me a lot at first, but it's so that it doesn't matter how good your content is if nobody sees it. So therefore I was focusing on, well, let's have more people seeing my content. And then it sort of compromised, A, like I think the quality of my content and B, who I actually was as a person. Where I definitely have to admit that in this journey, I lost myself in the month of June, I would say. And I'm still in the process of trying to figure out, okay, what is the next step forward you know one thing i'd planned again behind the scenes i have so many different ideas and it's a question well which ideas do you focus on and to tell a little anecdote i actually count this idea of a weekly schedule and i thought this is an idea it seems good to me but i don't know for sure so i'm going to get some feedback from our people and see what of my ideas i engage with most so i can focus on and then i sort of the first response i got was someone saying like these are just dumb questions but you know, when it comes to questions, if you ask a question, yeah, you might seem dumb for one minute, but you're going to be a lot more enlightened and that's going to help you a lot more. If you don't ask that question, you're just going to be a fool for life. So that's why I say like people someday like, oh, like, why do you ask these questions, Max? And like the answer is because questions are how you learn. You know, as I ask you guys questions normally in the videos. Okay, I've got to do it in this one, but I'm not going to do a, another take because whatever. I just want to do get this out of my chest. So I, I think that's more or less what I have to share on this topic though. Like as a content creator, it's really tough because A, the growth is very slow in the beginning. So you're putting a lot of time and effort in and not really seeing many results at first. And that could be even if your content is quite good inside, like just attracting people in can be a big challenge. Which brings to the second point, like it does require learning new skills. And then the third part really comes down to managing the response of other people in terms of being able to respond in a way that best suits you, where you're able to kind of continue improving your videos without kind of losing your authentic self in the process. You can see that this is something I have struggled a bit with. You know, I think that this is sort of video where like probably it's the kind of thing that 
I don't know. This could get zero views. It could get a million. I have absolutely no idea. And at this point, I frankly don't care because just talking about this just makes me feel better. And if you like it, then yeah, like and, sub and consider subscribing. If you don't like it, well, watch someone else. So I don't really care about your opinion. And that's just me being honest about it. So uh, yeah, basically the main lesson I learned from uh, my YouTube journey is I don't care what other people think anymore. I'm just going to do what I enjoy. It's naturally me. If you like it, stick around. If you don't, go somewhere else. All right. See you guys later. Get out of here.